before starting uh, i'll mention that this session will be recorded quality ke maiyar ko barqarar rakhne ke liye is call ko record kiya jayega sir so uh, the topic for uh, the day is uh, let me share the screen okay so screen is visible and readable yes yes okay, great so uh, the topic for the day is the ethical implications of the employment practices uh so we will be talking about uh about the ethics whenever we are employing people over there uh l- giving a brief overview of it like when we had a lecture with ma'am we discussed about the corona the covid 19 issue and currently this is the very right time in which we can see how companies are behaving and what ethical practice are are they going to follow so if they are not laying off their employees and if they are not uh, treating their employees unfairly at this particular stage we can understand that these companies are well aware of their ethical practices so starting with uh, what are unethical practices that may include the downsizing that may include the layoffs and uh, that may include the terminations so these are all the the forced downsizing layoffs or termination can be called as the unethical practices or the ethical issues so when these issues are implemented unfairly that obviously leads to the ethical issues to the firm not only to the firm but the society at so uh, over here in this book there is a definition there is a discussion about the japanese company's tradition of a lifetime employment so japanese normally initially they had a tradition that whenever they employ any particular person they employ them for the lifetime and they took care of him until the last day but the the things keep on changing uh, in the current scenarios uh, there is an example very interesting example of uh, sega enterprises limited uh, when the they were the producers of video games they are very much uh, popular we uh, the sega enterprises uh, we had played the sega games in the earlier stages as well so actually they wanted to lay off uh, one of their employees names as uh toshiyuki sakai sakai was basically uh, of to uh, to uh, sakai was basically uh, the name of the employee so the company said that his performance was substandard and they offered him a severance package so over here the word is severance severance means that anybody who is going to lay being forcefully laid off we normally use the word golden handshake in our culture so actually they they gave him some offered him some package so please leave and we are going to give you some very handsome amount of payment so they offered him a very handsome amount and said you can leave the company interestingly he refused to quit and 3 days later uh, sega told mr sakai to take home all his personal belongings turn in all the company property and report to an office dubbed the persona room so per- persona room is the word used in in the japanese so that is in english it is called as the personal room so what they did was 3 day, days later when he refused to quit he uh, the company actually sent him to a room which was not a room but a confinement actually it was an empty room with three chairs desk locker and a f- phone without a connection so they basically sent him to a confinement within the office and he was unable to talk to anybody over there he was all alone in it so it was uh, they actually the book termed is that it was he was being laid off japanese style so what happened next is he stayed in the room every day from precisely 8:30 am to 5:15 pm 40 hours a week he he was there all alone no connections no work was assigned to him and actually this was the punishment given to him and to show other employees that such punishment can be given if you are not uh accepting our severance packages sega cut its workforce by 1/4 after few of the months and 750 employees were laid off with this severance package and mr sekai who basically refused to leave earlier he claimed that sega used the persona room to frighten the employees that anybody who is not going to accept this severance package will be sent to the confinement will be sent to the so such persona rooms so actually this was the first uh, you can say the large scale unethical issue that was raised in japanese environment and that was been copied by many international journals later on 
uh, included the including the Harvard journals. So this was basically the ethical implications of the employment practices and given the example of the Japanese uh, who first time uh, went towards unethical practice and such an unethical practice is seen uh, in the European countries in these days. So this was overall the first topic was regarding the ethical implications. If there is any question regarding this topic, this was a short topic. Uh, actually, when Mem was discussing about this topic, I had just written two lines about it. Uh, if there is anything that is uh, questionable, so you can ask so, so that I can move on to the next topic, which is uh, like quite an extensive one. Afzal, you did not declare that uh, what became the fate of uh, Mr. Sakai? Did he survive in detai mein kaim rahe apni detai mein ya ki ultimately surrender kar diya Sakai ne? Actually, sir, yes, the yes, same yes, question was been was been raised in my mind. Our mind me bhi, mere mind me bhi suspense tha. I searched online. Book me mention nahi hai. Book me mention nahi hai. Matlab exactly. And neither book me mention hai na. Many I searched it on the internet, and all of the journal who was Achha. addressing this topic, they didn't tell us that what was the fate of this person. So I was really curious about that as well. So, but I was unable to find that. Lekin yeh ke, but he stood. The point was ke ethically he tried to take a stance over there that it is an unethical hmm. thing if somebody is unable to mm. do good work so she shouldn't lay them off so he took a, st mm. a stand and overall japanese tried to understand by this stance mm. later on so actually japanese ke against a movement thi in the european countries at that time they actually uh, really uh, pointed this issue out and they said ki japanese ne to ye kar diya hai aur ye against jis tarah wo propaganda karte hain but this uh, became a very uh, at, at the end of the day japanese learned from this a lot Mm. Uh, even today, the book is saying, even an expense or many online which search yet in the today world, it is not been practiced. Ke jam jo initially baat kar rahe the, ke lifetime employment ki baat jo thi, Japanese are not 100% following that thing now. In fact, they are uh, offering additional tweaks to the uh, job and job securities. Is kender wo tweaks to karein, lekin lifetime wali baat ab ab jo thi Japanese kender bhi mm. is not common nowadays. It is been practiced, but it is not that common now as it sure, was earlier. Yes. So, continue. if there is any question, uh, else I'll, I should move on to the next part. Ma'am, uh, uh, Yes. What I perceived the topic is uh, that there would be some ethical guideline uh, while employing the employees. So, in topic, uh, there is nothing even about something uh, positive ethics, you can say. Yes. Like, uh, Actually, they try to point out, they give a background of unethicality over there. That's what I have understood from this. Oh, by reading out each and every word, I have came to know that this is the only thing which they discussed. And they, th they thought that this was the first point when companies started thinking about the ethical issues, ethical practices. Initially, they were just thinking about the performances. They were thinking about the working layoffs and that's it but they were not very much aware of the ethical practices. So soon after this issue was been raised by this Ms. Mr. Sakai, and this was a very good company, Saga Enterprise, a very, very renowned company. And this issue was been uh, pinpointed by many of the Europeans and the Americans in their journals. So soon after that, they realized that ethicality is something which need to be catered as well. So this is basically the background which they gave. Uh, so in ethical practices, they gave that uh, the employee should be taken care of. And in addition to the performance related pays, they gave us and many additional thing which is coming into the next topic. So the, these are basically been covered in the non traditional investment approaches, I believe that can be really related. So these things were okay. developed later after this point. So, okay. st so starting with the non traditional investment approaches. So we have discussed already about the traditional approaches right now. So we discussed about the performance based. We discussed about the, in the previous topics, which Ma'am Kurothulan has discussed. The earlier participants have told us, Sir Masrur has told us about the thing. So these were the initial approaches towards the human development. So right now we're talking about the non-traditional investment approaches, which are not traditional, which is not black and white yet. Uh, most of the things are not in black and white, but these are being developed in the uh, in the economies. So first point is the investments in disabled employees. This is really an important element, like how to treat a disabled employee. Normally in the third world countries and underdeveloped countries, actually what we do is we give them the disability insurance policy. We offer them the disability policies of whosoever is going to be disabled during the job or after the job, we offer them an insurance to get rid of that employee. 
we offer him an insurance we say okay thank you very much you can go to the home and you, you can enjoy this insurance and that's it we're not going to help you out in recovering so this was the initial phase when companies were offering the insurances only then the things developed and companies started thinking the organization started thinking that we have to return these disabled employees back to the workforce we have to actually make them unable to come to the com to the companies again and by by doing the little developments in some areas they they understood they realized that they, these people can be really fruitful for the organization in the longer run like given an example over there uh, is 3m and eastman kodak they actually developed the programs that in that enabled disabled workers to return to the work often relatively inexpensive devices or aids that can allow physically disabled employees to be productive worker again so by using very inexpensive devices or aids these allow a physically disabled employee to return to the office so if there is any minor injury or if there is minor minor disability or any disability that can be recovered so they try to take them back into the organization so these companies 3m and eastman kodak initially worked on it so what they did was they actually uh, there was a study uh, by the multiple companies they said that we can raise the height of the desk so anybody who is disabled or using the wheelchairs actually the desks are not aligned to the wheelchairs so why not we just raise our desk so that the wheelchairs can be adjusted inside it and the person can easily work on it so this was a very minor tweak they did then providing the curb ramps we can see in the schools mostly right now and many offices the, the developed offices we are having the curb ramps over there so that the anybody who is on the wheelchair can easily access the office and easily access the other areas rather than using the stairs then simple changes in the restroom facilities so if they're using the restrooms we just need to do this very little changes on on, on these areas then lowering the elevator controls normally it is seen that the elevator controls are not accessible to the person who is sitting in the wheelchair so they just lowered those access controls for them as well allowing to work shorter hours flex time we have discussed about that already uh, the, what is the flex time giving them the flexible timings or to work for the shorter hours so that they can uh, produce more in the shorter hours and these were the little things little tweaks which were done by these companies and they came up that these workforce disabled workforce can really work in the offices just like normal people at&t dupont and hurt for insurance ibm and cs these are the companies uh, who research a lot who basically worked on uh, returning the disabled employees back to their office and they actually shared the knowledge with other companies which they have acquired in accommodating these disabled workers so actually these were the pioneers in uh, making the disabled workers come back to their offices and actually they learn from them and they share the data with other companies so that they can use the similar tweaks which are been uh, discussed earlier like raising providing curbs and lowering elevator control so all these things have been developed by these companies after some time then performance comparison for uh, disabled interesting point is when disabled people came back to the offices the performances were really interesting like one large chicago bank changed the job of a transcriptionist so that only dictated work type so actually the employee was blind he was unable to see so what they did was they they did a little change to his to her job and and gave her only work which are, which were been dictated by somebody else so what happened was she was able to uh, write 96 words per minute without the errors and in these days we understand 96 words per minute is a quite an extensive speed while while we are talking typing so sir masoor might know about the typing speed because he is very much watching and observing the typist in front of him 96 words per minute is quite an ex an amazing speed so the blind person was producing that plus when increasing life spans so with increasing life spans there is a greater likelihood the people with experience are disabled in the nation so there was a study which states that our life spans are increasing with the development in the medicine field so initially when people were dying uh, of cholera and all of those diseases right now people are getting cured about uh, by them but the problem is some of the people get disabled after that uh, cure so 
they say that there is a likelihood that people will experience more disabled conditions in the longer run so in the upcoming years we have to think about this, these disabled people and we cannot offer everyone just an insurance policy and get rid of them because more and more people are going to be disabled in the future other than being dead by some disease so this was basically the overview of uh, how to treat the disabled employees in the organization the first way was the disability insurance policy and second way was to make them return back to the workforce and by doing the little tweaks we can make them back to the offices and their performance and their loyalty with the organization will be far more than the other people that was been observed so next point is the investments in the employee health so employee health by investing in the employee health conditions there were studies which told us that there was quite an interesting developments been made in the international organizations and the results were really really overwhelming so first point is the providing the basic medical care facilities so actually while talking about the basic medical care uh, facilities we're talking about the third world countries underdeveloped countries so the countries where in the offices we don't have the basic medical cares available to us so we can see all around our offices most of the offices don't even have their first aid boxes or first aid uh, first aid clinic inside their offices we don't have it but in developed countries they have the, these type of first aid medical care and first aid uh, they have a backup of doctors within their organizations as well so providing basic medical care will prove to be a very uh, substantial for the growth and uh, st stability of the mental health of the employee they will feel more secure in these environments second point is increasing the quality of nutrition so companies operating in mexico have learned that they must furnish two meals a day to ensure that their workers are receiving sufficient nutrition and in this book they are talking about the maculadora plants in mexico so what is maculadora plants maculadora are type of companies in which we are uh, actually producing a lot like the textile companies in pakistan we have hundreds and thousands of people working under one floor and they keep on producing and converting one material to another like uh, in manufacturing units you can see there are thousands of people doing a job over there so these type of plants are known as maculadora plants and these plants in mexico commonly operate medical clinics within the plants themselves and second study they did was this starts uh, furnishing two meals a day to them and the performance which they observed were quite better than the earlier stages so we can provide the undernourished people we can provide the nutrition facilities we, we need to keep a check of, on the nutrition facilities on the nutritious uh, elements of the of the employees and we have to make them nutritious make them uh, nutritionally possible to work for that so anybody who is not 100% uh, nutritious like he's not taking the nutritious food he might he or she may not be able to work like the, the people who are taking who are having a good intake of nutrition second is the reduction of smoking so it has been found that employees absenteeism rates are approximately 50% higher for the smokers in international companies like developed countries they observed that the, the people who were smokers their absenteeism was 50% higher than the non smokers then they found out that the rates of early disability and mortality are are approximately 300% higher in these type of people so they are people who are smoking are mostly disabled and their mortality rate are approximately 300% higher than the other mm -hmm. people secondary effects of smoking costs companies an extra $2500 each year per smoker so after the research they found out that the secondary effect of the smoking cost them $2500 $2500 each smoker every year and then they talk about the hardline policies they started developing the hardline policies against the smoking after finding of these things so what happened after that was 21% of the respondents who were smoking at the time they heard about the policy they quit smoking so after the hardline policies were made by the companies 21% people when they were aware of these policies this they quit smoking and 42% of those people who quit smoking 
they stopped smoking because of these policies only. So actually out of 21%, 42% quit just because of the policy. So we, they were able to make people quit smoking by uh, using hardline policies against the smoking facility, um, against the smoking things. Then another interesting data was found that they said that no quitting behavior was related to such strict policies. So people who quit the job, it wasn't because of the hardline anti-smoking policies of the company. It was because of some other factors, the obsolescence, the hardline trainings, the longer working hours. They, there might be some other factors that are related to their uh, quitting of the jobs, but none of the factors were related to these strict anti-smoking policies. So nobody left the organization just because of the strict smoking policies over there. Next is interesting practices by companies against smoking. So a Pullman company, PTC Aerospace, employees who smoke, they have to pay an additional charge for health insurance. So what they did was they charge additional amount of insurance to the people who were smoking. Fire and police departments adopted comprehensive non-smoking policies. And the reason was nature of their job. Obviously the nature of a fire department, the job of the fire department is to fight against the fires. And it's a very hard line job the type of job and the people who smoke more are more inclined towards the heart related diseases. They are soft and hard. So, so we need the people who are very hard hurt and hard. They can like do such hard hit jobs like fire, uh, fireworks again against the fire and uh, working in the police department. So these are basically known as a hard line jobs and we need a stronger people. Uh, for these jobs. So they actually adopted a very comprehensive no smoking policies and because they cannot afford any heart diseases in these people. Then investment in fitness centers and physical conditioning programs. So some companies invested in phys fitness centers and they provided physical conditioning programs to their employees. What happened? Mutual benefit life insurance found that this is the name of the company. So they found out that after it provided a fitness center for its employees, what happened was, so the people who was, who were the user of this physical condition program, who were users of the fitness centers, their missing work days was 2.51 day only against. So it is per month. So in, in a month, if they are taking 2.51 uh, days leave, the people who were not the users, they were taking 4.25 leaves in a month. Like it is nearly the double. So the people who are using this fitness center, the absenteeism rate was quite less than against those who were not the users of it. Then again, medical claims by the users of the fitness center were $313 only as compared to $1086 by the non-users of these fitness centers. So there's a quite a big difference. So this happened to save the cut the cost of the companies as well. So other factors like close monitoring. So some of them, some of the companies, so these are the factors that are actually different and that can be different according to the different companies like support and close monitoring of the self esteem of the employees working in jobs, having high potential for burnout. So we need to keep a close check on the people, those who are working in jobs, who, which is having a high potential of for burnout. So if there is a high layoff in any type of a company like hospitals or any other companies like restaurants, if there is a high layoff, we have to keep a close check on that. Given an example, Sunbeam Oster housewares, housewares, it is a company in two year period, they actually seen that six premature births cost its healthcare program $1.2 million. So there was a very drastic increase in the health healthcare program. Uh, the expenses were too high and they had to spend 1.2 million only on the premature births. Okay. What happened? So in supply, so they actually tried to figure out the problem and they found out that the employees were not very well versed in parental care same things. So they are not very well versed. They didn't knew about how to do the parental care and how to tackle with the issues. So what they did was they established an on-site health clinic and every person uh, was required to do a periodic checkups. So every person who was pregnant, they, they were required to do the periodic checkups in that health clinic. What was the result? The result was interesting that average medical cost per birth declined from $27,000 to $3,500 $3, $3, only. 
so it's from twenty-seven thousand dollars to thirty-five hundred dollars only over a five-year period. So there was a very good change, positive change, and they were able to cut the cost by just doing one tweak. That was establishing an on-site health clinic and making the people who are pregnant to just visit those clinics every periodically. So, but the only drawback to this was. They, this could be viewed as an undesired intrusion to the privacy of the employees. So some people won't like it. They may believe it's against their privacy, but the overall benefit to such uh, special cases can be done. So in other factors like close monitoring, he said that if we can identify some specific issues related to our organization, related to our culture, related to our areas, some specific issues can be identified and these type of issues can be catered as well. So this was all uh, from my side. So we talk about the, in this topic, we talk about the investment in disabled employees. And then we talk about the investments in employee health and in employee health, we discuss about the basic med medical health care. Then we discuss about increasing the quality of nutrition, reduction in smoking, increasing practices by the companies against smoking, and then investment in fitness centers, and then some specific issues related to the companies can be different as per the areas and as per the company. So if there is any question, you are most welcome to ask. Uh, so no question, obviously, uh, you explained the subject uh, very perfectly. Uh, however, one thing is for sure that the topic you were assigned by default was having no Biased. strategic value as such. <laughs> <laughs> Very the well. Said. Topic has has had no strategic value at all. Okay. So he himself chose such bias topic. Um, uh, honestly, saying <laughs> I chose the last one, like I I placed myself at the last one. I didn't knew. I didn't even read this topic earlier. <laughs> I, I just read it uh, an hour earlier and found out that it obviously that wasn't interesting. But the point is, but when uh, when you ch chose this topic, someone pointed out. I think Sir Zia or Zahid pointed out that it is biased. No, it seems it is a size. <laughs> I, I didn't know. Next time I'm going to like, you are going to choose the topics for the rest of the people. So that's what we can. Okay. So. Yeah, uh, so when I start, I will not start the exam. There is no importance. Okay, sir. It's like that. I believe that, yes, it is uh, like uh, unimportant. It seems like we normally ignore these things. But it's like that if there is a related topic related to the overall topic, like our question 20 marks, then it's like that we remember the main things and other things we forget. It's like that 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 we forget. Actually, yes. And interestingly, in this case, we have stories like this. I think that we have a story like this, so we will be able to develop one or two paragraphs extensively. So, we have a lot of information to write. We have a lot of stories to share. Sir, over to you. If there, is any, if there isn't any question, so we can like turn up the, uh, towards Sarzia and he can continue with the next topic. I'll share the screen again. Okay, so investments in job secure workforces. Sir, over to you. Yes, so first of all, our main topic is investment in jobs for workforces. And basically, companies invest when they keep employees on payroll during recessions and downturns. Like in recession downturns, companies retain their employees and don't do layoffs. It means that they are investing. Definitely, because they are not cutting that cost that is upon them in case of those downturn recession and bad periods. Achha, ab, uh, basically, uh, is investment ka ke behind motives kya hote hain? Ek motive to ye hai ki hum unionization se company avoid karna cha rahi hai. Thik hai? Yeah, matlab, hum employees ko lay off karenge, unko nikalenge job se, to kya hoga ki wo unionization ka concept aega aur wo uh, means ke lockdowns kar sakte hain aur uh, company ke jo hai wo 
मतलब एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव मामला काफी डिस्टर्ब कर सकते हैं सेकेंड मोटिव ये है कि जनाब एम्प्लॉयज जो हैं उनको मोटिवेटेड रखना और इन बैड डेज में कंपनी उनका साथ देगी तो जब गुड डेज आएंगे तो इन दिनों में वो मोटिवेटेड एम्प्लॉयज ज्यादा प्रोडक्टिव होकर काम करेंगे ज्यादा एफर्ट के साथ काम करेंगे तो क्या होगा कि दैट विल बी विल बी बेनिफिशियल फॉर द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन द लॉन्ग रन इन द कमिंग गुड डेज और स्पेशली इन द इरा ऑफ रैपिड टेक्नोलॉजिकल चेंजेस स्टिफ कंपटीशन एंड डायनेमिक मार्केट्स इसकी इंपॉर्टेंस जो है वो विद पैसिव टाइम और ज्यादा होती जा रही है कि कंपनीज जो हैं वो बैड टाइम से एम्प्लॉयज को रिटेन रखें और उनकी मोटिवेशन को एज ए कैटलिस्ट यूज करें इन दो गुड डेज साइकिल चेंजेस जो आते हैं उसमें अच्छा उसके बाद इसमें यह है कि नाइनटीन एटीज के बाद जो है वो ले ऑफ से एक नॉर्मल प्रैक्टिस बन गई थी रूटीन बन गई थी कंपनीज की स्टिल इसके बावजूद बड़ी कंपनीज लाइक एच पी हार्ले डेविडसन जो कि फॉर्चून हंड्रेड कंपनीज का हिस्सा हैं वो उनकी कोई ऑफिशियल ले ऑफ पॉलिसी नहीं थी स्टिल नहीं है ठीक है और ये काफ़ी अरसे से उनकी पॉलिसी रही है स्ट्रिक्टली कि दे डोंट हैव एनी ऑफिशियल ले ऑफ पॉलिसीज फॉर देयर एम्प्लॉज और अगर करंट सैनरी में देखा जाए तो क्या हुआ है कि ये यू एस ए में ले ऑफ जो है वो एक डेली का फिनमिना बन चुका है और स्पेशली इन रिसेशन पीरियड्स रिसेशनरी पीरियड्स और अगर अब करंट सीनरी में बात की जाए कोविड नाइन्टीन के परस्पेक्टिव से तो क्या हुआ है कि यू एस ए में रिकॉर्ड डाउन साइजिंग हुई है मतलब तारीख की रिकॉर्ड ब्रेकिंग जो है वो डाउन साइजिंग और ले ऑफ जो है वो किए गए हैं और स्पेशली ये मेरे एक दोस्त से बात हो रही थी यू एस ए में है इस वक्त न्यूयॉर्क में वो भी इसी चीज़ को सेकेंड कर रहा था कि वाकई ऐसा हुआ है कि मैसिवली जो है वो एम्प्लॉज को जो है निकाला गया है कंपनी से अच्छा सेकेंडली फिर इसमें टॉपिक आ जाता है कॉस्ट ऑफ ले ऑफ तो कॉस्ट ऑफ ले ऑफ ये सामने जो आपने पेज ओपन किया है ये पहले ही एक किस्म का बुलेट्स में है और इसके हवाले से ये है कि तकरीबन कंपनीज की एक स्टडी हुई थी जिसमें हंड्रेड सरप्लस वर्क प्रो सिचुएशन जो हैं Uh, मतलब तकरीबन हंड्रेड कंपनी थी जहाँ पे सर प्लस वर्क वर्क फोर्स मौजूद थी तो तो एफर्ट जो है की गई कि ये ज्यादा कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव रहा कि एम्प्लॉज को थर्टी परसेंट सिचुएशन में ले ऑफ नहीं ना किया जाए और ट्वेंटी परसेंट में जो है एंड टू ले ऑफ फ्यूवर इन ट्वेंटी परसेंट हाँ मतलब एक इन हंड्रेड कंपनीज का जो डाटा लिया गया उसमें रिसर्च ने फाइंड किया कि थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ द सिचुएशन में एम्प्लॉज को ले ऑफ ना करना भी कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव रहा इन द लॉन्ग रन और ट्वेंटी परसेंट सिचुएशन में कम एम्प्लॉज को डाउन साइज किया गया एज कम्पेयर टू जितनी की जरूरत थी डाउन साइज करने की और वो भी कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव रहा और फिर बेसिकली देखा गया है कि टिपिकली क्या होता है कि टेन से फिफ्टीन परसेंट एम्प्लॉज जो हैं वो डाउन साइजिंग और ले ऑफ को देखते हुए अपना डिसीजन लेते हैं और वॉल्टरली खुद ही कंपनी को छोड़ जाते हैं तो ये एक बहुत मैसिव सेटबैक है कंपनीज के लिए कि 10 टू 15 परसेंट एम्प्लॉज वो फॉलो करते हैं जब कंपनी जबरदस्ती एम्प्लॉज को जो है वो निकालती है ऑर्गेनाइजेशन से तो अब इन कॉस्ट को हम जो है वो ब्रीफली देख लेते हैं बुलेट्स में जो अभी स्क्रीन पे हैं कि फर्स्ट है कॉस्ट रिलेटेड टू बम्पिंग लेस सीनियर एम्प्लॉज अब किया गया जाता है कि जनरली ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में कल्चर ये है कि जब ये डाउन साइजिंग की जाती है तो लेस सीनियर एम्प्लॉज को पहले निकाला जाता है और फिर इससे क्या होता है कि एक ना ख़त्म होने वाला जो है वो साइकिल चल पड़ता है कि लेस सीनियर लेस सीनियर निकलते जा रहे हैं और आते आते बारी जो है वो सीनियर टॉप मैनेजमेंट तक पहुँच जाती है अच्छा अब होता क्या है कि जब लेस सीनियर एम्प्लॉज को निकाला जाता है तो उनकी जगह जो मोस्ट सीनियर पर्सन है वो जाहिर है कि उसको उसकी ड्यूटी जो है वो लेनी पड़ती है और उसको वो टास्क जो परफॉर्म करने पड़ते हैं तो इसी हवाले से ये देखें कि रिड्यूस प्रोडक्टिविटी ड्यूरिंग लर्निंग पीरियड्स तो उनको उस पीरियड में जो लर्निंग दोबारा से करनी पड़ती है वो भी उस पर उनकी प्रोडक्टिविटी ओवरऑल रिड्यूस होती है फिर कॉस्ट ऑफ ट्रेनिंग एम्प्लॉज असाइन टू अदर जॉब्स जो एम्प्लॉज आपने ले ऑफ कर दिए तो उनकी जगह जो आए हैं उनको भी ट्रेन करना पड़ेगा जॉब की नेचर थोड़ी सी स्पेशली अगर डिफरेंट हो तो ना भी हो तो स्टिल जो है रिक्वायरमेंट्स को पूरा करना पड़ेगा ट्रेन करना पड़ेगा एम्प्लॉज को और फिर वेज सप्लीमेंट्स फॉर री असाइनमेंट्स टू जॉब रिसीविंग लोअर कम्पनसेशन यानी ऐसी जॉब से अगर आपने उसको रीअसाइन किया है एम्प्लॉय को जो कि उसको पहले से कम पे कर रही है तो डेफिनेटली आपको सप्लीमेंटल वेज जो है उसको देनी पड़ेगी 
फिर सेकंड इसमें टॉपिक है कॉस्ट की जो कैटेगरी कॉस्ट रिलेटेड टू दी टर्मिनेशन ऑफ एम्प्लॉयज सेपरेशन पेमेंट्स तो जाहिर है कि जब आपने एम्प्लॉयज को निकालना है तो उनको सेपरेशन पेमेंट्स देनी पड़ेंगी गोल्डन हैंड शीट्स वगैरह जैसे आप अभी जिक्र कर रहे थे हायर रेट्स ऑफ अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट कम्पनसेशन तो अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट कम्पनसेशन ओवरऑल शायद ये इकोनॉमिक पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से ओवरऑल पिक्चर के हवाले से मेरे ख्याल बात की गई है जैसे यू और कैनेडा में स्पेशली जो अनएम्प्लॉयड लोग होते हैं उनको वेलफेयर स्टेट होने के नाते बहुत ज्यादा जो है वो पेमेंट की जाती है अब जैसे यूएसए में 800 जो है वो डॉलर्स पर वीक ये दिया जा रहा है टैक्सी वाला एक बंदा जो कि टैक्सी नहीं चला रहा लॉकडाउन की वजह से तो उसको 800 जो है डॉलर दिया जा रहा है अब बाकी का नहीं पता एक एग्जाम्पल है इसी तरह डिप्लेशन ऑफ द फर्म इन्वेस्टमेंट इन ट्रेनिंग एम्प्लॉयज तो जिन एम्प्लॉयज को आपने निकाला उनकी ट्रेनिंग पे जो आपने इन्वेस्टमेंट की थी तो ये डिप्लीट हो रही है डेप्रिसिएट हो रही है नेक्स्ट एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव कॉस्ट की कैटेगरी इसमें ये है कि ह्यूमन रिसोर्स प्रोसेसिंग तो आपको करनी पड़ेगी उस वो भी कॉस्टली है जो भी प्रोसेस आप करेंगे वो उन पर कुछ कॉस्ट कुछ लागत आएगी कलाइकल एक्सपेंसिस होंगे और फिर लेड ऑफ एम्प्लॉयज के मेडिकल एग्जामिनेशन कंडक्ट करने पड़ेंगे अब ये इसकी वैसे मैंने सर्च भी किया क्योंकि एग्जाम्पल मुझे नहीं नजर आई मे बी वहाँ पे कोई प्रैक्टिस हो कि एम्प्लॉयज को जिनको ले ऑफ किया जाता है तो उनका कोई मेडिकल एग्जामिनेशन चेकअप किया जाता हो मे बी आप लोग बेहतर इस हवाले से अगर पता हो तो गाइड कर सकें फिर इंक्रीज सुपरवाइजरी ऑब्लीगेशन फॉर मैनेजर्स ऑफ री असाइंड एम्प्लॉयज अब री असाइंड एम्प्लॉय है जो कि जिसने लेड ऑफ वर्कर की जगह ली है तो अब वो भी गले पड़ गया सुपर जो है वो सीनियर मैनेजर के और उसको भी उसको देखना पड़ेगा अब डेफिनेटली हमने पहले भी बात कर ली कि वो लर्निंग पीरियड में है गलतियाँ भी करेगा उसको ट्रेन भी करना है तो एक ये एक्स्ट्रा बर्डन है जो एज ए सुपरवाइजरी फंक्शन उसको लेना पड़ेगा मैनेजर को अच्छा फिर फोर्थ सर जी आई एम सॉरी टू कट यू लाइक इट देयर इज लेस देन 1 मिनट रिमेनिंग शुड आई रिकॉल द सेशन बिफोर यू स्टार्ट द श्योर श्योर ठीक है